What is up, shit, I'm 30 listeners? I know you enjoyed that podcast because I love me some Carla, and I know y'all love some Carla too. But my name is Imani Blair, and I am the host of Lick the Rapper Podcast. And if you love Carla's show, you will love mine because she taught me everything I know. Yes, I am one of her students from Idea to Launch, and my podcast is popping as fuck. And I'm just a little bit more ratchet than Carla. But I talk about music, I'm an artist, we talk about the struggle of being an artist and doing this thing independent in your 20s, and I love to talk about sex. You get it? Lick the rapper. Check out my first episode where we have a heated argument about booty. Do y'all think you need to have your life together to eat booty? We discuss it on Lick the Rapper Pod. See y'all soon. I say he's so sweet, I want to lick the rapper. So I let her lick the rapper. She, she, she licked me like a lollipop. What's up? Before we start the podcast, I want to remind you that the 12th, which is tomorrow, Thursday, whenever you're listening, March 12th, we are having our virtual pajama party for Patreon. So we get together, we drink wine, we all get to see each other virtually and discuss a bunch of different topics. So if you want to be there and join us, it is uh, honestly the best time. We get there for like an hour, hour and a half and just talk about life and different topics. So become a patron. You get extra episodes and all that stuff. So it's patreon.com forward slash I'm 30. I will link it on here. So if you want to make it to our virtual pajama party tomorrow, uh, make sure you get there because it's going to be fun and I'm going to be lit. Okay, bye. Welcome to the Shit on 30 podcast. This is the weekly show where we discuss and share our unfiltered opinions on topics such as mental health, relationships, sometimes it gets a little kinky and we talk about sex, parenting, and so much more. With me, your host, Carla Gomez. Now, my goal is to get rid of society's expectations about where we should be when we're in our 30s and just free ourselves to live the lives that we've always dreamed of. Now, friends, remember, it is never too late. Welcome back to another week of Shit, I'm 30. You will have just me today. It is a solo I am coming off of one hell of a week, maybe like two weeks, and I have talked about it. There's so many different bullets, guys, being thrown my way, but I was in church recently, and there is this um, book in the Bible that says, no weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. Now, this is not a sermon, and we're not going to church, okay? But amen to that one, because weapons are are forming they're forming against me it's like ak-47s grenades pistols handguns they're forming against me but i do and i'm keeping my faith that none of them will prevail and anyone that has ever said anything bad about me in any way shape or form or just use their tongue for something negative towards me will not prevail either um so keep that in mind because if you feel that you are going through something like me i feel like it's about to be world war three just within me you know not even in the world like with Carla herself. So if you haven't listened to the Mindful Monday from February 24th, go ahead and listen to it. It's called There's No Testimony Without a Test. And honey, like I said to you, I am being tested. But I also spoke about the fact that I asked and prayed to be where I am right now. And if I wasn't equipped to handle it, he would not have put it on my plate. So I'm eating exactly what he thinks that I can eat and I will be, I'll be okay. I'll be okay and so will you. So if you're going through a whole lot of shit right now and you think you can't handle it, remember that you can because if you couldn't, you wouldn't have the honor of going through it. I cannot wait for all this to blow over um, for me so I can look back and laugh about it and tell you all how I got through it. So remember, love your journey because you, know, you all know I'll be telling everything, but right now the specific, um, these things that are going through, I love to talk about them once I figured out what to do because at this moment in time, I don't know. I actually made an appointment with my therapist and I'm going to go see her tomorrow, tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon because, you know, there's times that you have to just figure it out. So taking this uh, episode now into our shit, you should know it, where it gets started. This is Women's History Month and I'm a woman. Most of you guys are women. If not, you were born from a woman. So Women's History Month, I wanted to highlight a story that I had not heard of before and maybe you have, but I think it definitely should have been way more viral than it has been, and hopefully it will be soon, but Maya Moore, and you're probably thinking, who the hell is Maya Moore? 
So Maya Moore is not from our history. She is currently, she's 30 years old and it's a WNBA star. She's won four titles, two gold medals during her eight year career. But this season, she is still under contract and she's continuing a two year hiatus from the Minnesota Lynx. And let me tell you why. She's off and has been taking a hiatus from her contract in the ba- in the WNBA in order to fight for the release of Jonathan Irons. And he's a man that many have believed was wrongfully convicted and sentenced to 50 years in prison back in 1997. So I'm bringing her up because as of this week, March 9th, which is as of today, two days ago, a cool County judge, Dan Green, ordered that his conviction be overturned for the 1997 burglary and non-fatal shooting that saw him convicted by an all-white jury. I'm getting all my information from Vlavity.com, by the way, so if you want to go look it up. Irons is now 40, but he was 16 years old when he was accused of breaking into a St. Louis home, shooting the homeowner in the head during a burglary. He did not die, but he did, or whoever shot him, he, the, the victim was shot. The victim testified that Irons was the person that broke into the house. There were no witnesses, no fingerprints, no footprints. There was no DNA evidence, nothing, nothing connected Irons to the case. Now, the prosecutors alleged that Irons confessed to the police and that he broke into the victim's home, but guess what? Just like so many other cases, there is no recording of that conversation. And that's according to the New York Times. The officer said that he didn't record it. And even though he was a minor, 16 years old, he was convicted as an adult. And the lawyers are have been denying the entire time. He never confessed to it. So the judges ordered were followed by, you know, cheers from the family and supporters who now he's been in prison for 23 years. And after the hearing, Maya called the uh, the prison and spoke to Irons, told him the results of the hearing. When he answered, you know, he got all these it's all these great things, but it's not over. The judge actually states that there is they can't discharge him yet until St. Charles County's prosecutor's office decides whether they're going to retry him within the next 30 days. So it's all this mess. And I'm bringing it all up because Maya Moore did not need to do this. And as women, we need to know and acknowledge how strong we are and how what we do right now does not define who we are. So Maya is a basketball player, a professional basketball player. That is what her living is about, but she felt compelled. And I have not read anywhere that she's connected to this man in any way, shape or form, but she wanted to be a a social justice warrior. And that's not her only title. That's not the only hat that she wore. But for two years, she believed in this so much that she did it. And she planted a seed and she worked on that soil. Like I also talked to you guys about the bamboo tree. She worked on that soil and she did put all her resources that she had in order to help irons. And it's now overturned. And some might look at it like, yay, you got to overturn. This is huge. And others that think in a pessimistic way are probably looking at it. Okay, it got overturned but he's still in prison. You know what? This is a lot more than anyone else would have done. And I want you now to take the story of Maya Moore, not necessarily because you want to be a social justice warrior, because when I think about it myself, I love to read the stories and I understand where they're coming from. And I love that there's people out there just like Kim Kardashian, they're doing doing it. I would never speak badly about her for doing what she's doing because she's helping other people. That's not something that motivates me or that I have a passion for. So I'm glad that those people that do have a passion do it because most of the time when they're doing this is not for profit. It really isn't. She's not sitting here making uh, a living off of bringing people out of prison. They're just doing it because they love it. So if there's something in your life that you want to pursue, Go for it. Start small with the little seed. I'm sure Maya probably went to a lawyer first and started educating herself little by little as to what she could do. Just like myself, I wanted to podcast little by little. I learned how to do it myself. Then I grew my business and I had to then invest in myself and do what I had to do. But whatever it is that you want to do yourself, and I'm speaking to you listening to me right now, start it. Start planting that seed. Start working with that soil and you might see it sprout. And like Maya right now, it got overturned, but he's still in prison. You're going to have to keep watering it and you have to make sure that it gets sun. So she's 30. She decided to do this at 30 years old. I don't know how old you are. You can be in your late 20s. You can be in your early 20s. You can be in your 30s. You can be in your 40s. But work towards what your passion is now because in a couple of years, you're going to see it grow. Now, Moving on from that and that little motivational speak, I needed to hear as well. Honestly, everything that I tell you guys is like I'm preaching to the choir, 
but I am also the choir. So when I'm speaking, a lot of these times, I'm telling myself, hey, remember this, remember this. While I'm recording this, I'm staring at my sticky notes that one of them says, you can, you should, you will. I stare at these notes and I remind myself all the time that I am a powerful woman. It's okay to be a powerful woman and it's okay to use my gifts. Don't let your gifts go to waste. Every single one of us has a gift. And um, man, woman, anything, you have a gift, use it. Do not let it go to waste. But today I do want to speak about changing triggers and being an ambivert, almost an introvert. So I've done a triggers episode before. So if you've been listening for a while, there is a triggers episode, but I had no idea that over time my triggers were going to change. And anxiety is something that we all deal with. The disorder of anxiety and not being able to control your anxiousness, it's when it becomes a problem. But anxiety is something that we all have. And that's something that I want to speak on because I feel like anxiety has become this thing where everyone's like, oh my God, I have anxiety. And they think it's a, ne- they think it's a negative thing. And it's not. It really, really isn't. And I actually heard this again while I had already been reading about it and heard about it at, while I was at church. They're like, you know, you need these anxious moments to move you. So I think I come on here and tell you guys about my crippling moments at times, but I forget to discuss the fact that sometimes when a little anxiety hits, it's a reminder and a quick shift to my brain to get shit done. Or an alert that I need to change up a specific behavior that maybe is not good for me at the moment. So when you feel anxious about work that's due, we need that to keep moving. We need it to get it done. So if that little bit of anxiety is not there yet, you need to recognize that there there might be something wrong also. Because your body should be sending you some type of urgency that either you need to run to the restroom or you need to get some work done. You need to speak to somebody or when you're about, like I said, when you're about to speak to someone, uh, maybe you're going to fire someone if you're a manager at your job. If you are putting in your two weeks, if maybe, you know, you fucked up at work and your boss is about to call you, you have to have that con- that conversation. Or if you have to confront a friend about an issue that you're having with them, that also causes anxiety. And it should, it should definitely cause some anxiety within you. If you don't, something wrong with you. And you probably have to think about why are you so nonchalant? Why does nothing bother you? Why are you just so free and carefree? You can be carefree, but to an extent. So, uh, complete transparency. I left therapy a few months ago. Well, I didn't leave. I just took a hiatus because I learned how to deal with the triggers that I had for a really long time. My triggers that I recognized were my last relationship, you know, that person and the aspects of, that relationship triggered me a lot. And my mother, uh, my situation with my ex-husband slash baby daddy, you know, the things with my daughter, that all triggered me and had me, you know, spiral out of control. And I learned how to deal with those triggers with my therapist. So I was doing so much better through the months, almost uh, over a year of therapy. I learned how to cope with those triggers. And although they weren't a thousand percent gone, I had the tools and I felt much, much better. I just felt really good. She taught me how to think about the fact that, hey, if your mom doesn't want to be a part, doesn't want you to be a part of her life and she doesn't reach out to you, it's okay. You did your part. You reached out when you wanted, when you did stop beating yourself over it. And that wasn't easy to accept, but I learned how to manage it. So it's really accepting and learning how to manage because you can't change things that are out of your control. And that's something that happens when you can't control your anxiety. But when you get that little bit of anxiety and you're able to change things up, listen, you got it. That anxiety helped you change something for the better. I wanted someone with my mother's specific situation. I wanted someone else to want what I want how I want it. And that's not how it works, even with my last relationship. But my brain couldn't process that particular situation. I still struggled with it. But again, I learned to manage those struggles and those triggers. So now when certain people say certain things um, or I have thoughts of the past, I don't necessarily break down crying. I think about, hey, it's okay. This is why it's happening and you'll be fine. This is what you can do right now to manage um, when it triggers you a little bit. So some of my triggers I had to eliminate from my life. And sometimes you can't just manage them. You have to eliminate them. Now, that person that triggers has left you. Now that 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 person that triggers you has left your life, that doesn't mean that that specific small trigger is always gone. So I'm going to tell you a quick story. You guys know I love stories. Uh, Not too long ago, I found out that I was a trigger to someone else 
which ended up ending the relationship or the friendship, but that had nothing to do with me. And it took me weeks to figure out it had nothing to do with me. So for weeks, anything I said, anything I did, this person would just lose their shit. And all of a sudden I was being attacked for everything that made me me. The way I spoke, my opinions, the way I walked, the way everything I did, it was just a trigger. And I was like, well, what am I doing? Oh, but you're this, you do this, this is not. And I'm thinking, I've done that my entire life. My entire life, that's been who I am. I grow as a person, but there's certain aspects of my life that are me. I'm loud. I will always be loud. I'm opinionated. I will always be opinionated. Will my opinions change over time? Absolutely. If you've been listening to me from the beginning, my opinions have changed on plenty of things, but I will always have an opinion about something. That's why I'm very unapologetically opinionated. So we actually decided to go to a therapy appointment. So we go to this therapy appointment and we try to figure out what the hell is going on. And within a few minutes, the therapist starts realizing that I just happened to remind this person of someone else that's a huge trigger for them. So now I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there thinking like, well, damn, I'm being attacked because of a trigger that has nothing to do with me. So we have to deal with certain triggers on our own. So if someone that's loud triggers you, you need to learn how to deal with that and how often you should be around someone that's like, if you can't be around that, then you just can't, you know, that's something if someone who's too laid back, which is what happened to me before someone that's too laid back and doesn't have ambition that triggers me. And I was around it all the time. I had to cut that person out, but you just might be able to, um, select what days and how often you're around someone that does certain things that trigger you because it has nothing to do with them. It might just bring you back to a point in your life where it really hurts you and you have to go back and unpack that information and if why is it bothering you are you dealing with it with that person so let's say it's like an uncle that used to beat you all the time when you were growing up and he used to smoke cigarettes so whenever you come around someone that smokes cigarettes or smells like cigarettes you get triggered well no you need to go back and unpack that and maybe speak to your uncle or speak to your therapist about how to get rid of that pain that way every time you smell a cigarette or you're around someone that smokes cigarettes you're not about to kill them or you tell them how much you hate them because they smoke the cigarette and you're like um I've always smoked a cigarette you know that's a really bad example because you should not smoke cigarettes but you know what I mean um so I say all this to show you that even though you might remove someone from your life that triggers you you still need to deal with that trigger itself and learn to recognize it and manage it in the real world because in the real world, all these triggers will still happen. Like I see people with their moms and like when Mother's Day comes around or I'm just walking around or I'm trying to mother my own child, it triggers me. It really does, but I've learned to manage it so I don't have to take it out on other people. If I see somebody having a really good day with their mom, I'm not gonna be like, you fucking bitch, I fucking hate you for having your mom. Like, no, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna attack anyone else because they have something that triggers me. So other people are not responsible for you being triggered. You cannot take away, take out your triggers on other people. Like this, that's just wrong. Um, now the changes of triggers and the new ones, because new levels come with new devils. And this is what I'm currently experiencing. I'm in a transition point in life, which is what life is all about. Like, we transition. If you're doing the same things you were doing last year, if you're doing the same things you were doing six months ago, you're doing something wrong. You're not progressing. You're not growing. You're not moving forward. You should always be evolving. And life is about like evolution. So I prayed for these things that I now have. And one of them is for my business to grow. And it's doing just that. It's growing at a steady pace that I can handle. Thank goodness that is moving at a pace that I can handle. And as long as I'm seeing growth, it's fine. But with aspect of my life shifting, I've turned into an introvert. And when I talked about this before, I thought it was because I was in my 30s. And honestly, being in your 30s does affect it like big time. Uh, when you're in your 30s, your priorities change and going out isn't just one of them. And being with your friends all the time isn't either. Your life has now changed. Now, I won't speak to everybody in their 30s because I follow some that haven't gotten the hint yet that it's time to stay your ass home and do something more fulfilling with your life other than going out to clubs, drinking, and fucking all day. But aside from that, I'll digress. I digress. That's just my opinion. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Actually, maybe I should because if you're listening to this and every day you're out in a fucking club and you're drinking and you're not doing anything with your life, you're just working your nine to five and not looking how to fulfill yourself even more, you're doing something wrong if you're doing this still in your 30s. You had your time in your 20s. Let that shit go. I actually went out this past weekend to a club and I woke up the next four, the next morning. And the first thing I told Mandy was, I don't miss shit about a nightclub. 
I miss absolutely nothing about it. The only reason I went is because she was booked after her show. And I'm like, let me support for a bit. But by 120, I had already told my other homegirl, Carla, I said, girl, wrap it up. Let's go. And she's like, bet, let's go. And she's only, what, 27, 28? I just didn't want to be there. I couldn't remember the last time I went to a club. And even in New York City, I was doing a lot of day parties and a few clubs. And I mean, the nightclubs, is, oh, it is where Wax got to fall in love with me and my cool dance moves. But I took him to a place that my friend was managing and we went there for a few drinks. It was a bunch of white folks that had no idea who we were and we just didn't want to go home. But my party days back um, when I went to New York were one thing and then now, just, there's nothing about it. I even went to like day drinking from 6 to 8.30 on Sunday, the day after. And I was just like, this shit ain't for me. Everybody was super young. Uh, drinking, I ha- I, you guys know, I kind of gave up alcohol. I did, I'll have my drink here and there, like my margarita or my mojito during dinner. But drinking like that, taking shots, I gave that up. And I feel so much better. And I'm not judging you if you still do it. That's, you know, up to you. But I will tell you that my body feels so much better ever since I gave up, you know, excessive drinking of hard liquor and taking shots. It's just my wine does it for me and it feels good. I I am glad actually that although, you know, the person that started this for me was, was really my boyfriend. He's like, you know, I don't like this. Why don't we try this instead? You know, we're, we're shifting into a different direction. I rather, let's, let's just try the wine. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. And once I took that, made that shift to, you know, for our relationship and for my body, for my health, I just feel, it feels amazing. So yes, being in your thirties is going to shift your extrovertedness. I'm not sure if that's a word. Um, and to more of being an ambivert, I'm not going to say full introvert, I thought, well, I thought that my age is what started it. That is also the time that I was shifting my career. And, you know, I was less than a year in and I, it took a huge toll on how I feel about being around people, the business that I'm in right now, because I don't interact with actual human beings. Although I do, it's all virtual. So it's very, very different from what we're used to growing up in our era, at least for mine. So now I'm a podcaster from Orlando, Florida. I have to seriously shout anyone that listens to me because you guys are amazing at respecting me and listening to me when I speak. You know, I being around people is something that you used to fuel me. I used to love it. I worked in a club. I ran a pawn shop. You know, being around people is what fueled me. But I started being around a circle of people with huge followings. And again, I'm just a podcaster from Orlando, Florida. We are not this huge, crazy city like, you know, New York or LA or Dallas. Like, that's not what Orlando is. So... I'm hanging around with people with huge followings and fans. And I'm watching their interaction. And although it is amazing, I also have gotten privy to see the other side, which is the lack of privacy and respect. And that shit scared the hell out of me. So because of fear, I started to retract myself. And I noticed myself purposely avoiding any invitations to go anywhere. When I do go, I get there late and I kind of hide and leave early. Uh, people began to trigger me and this is not what I want because I really do love people. I told a story on live yesterday and it was from Saturday when I went over to Mandy's show. I got there a little bit late. I think I was going to get there late regardless uh, because I was already very anxious about going, but I did have a business phone call. So I had a call and I got there a little bit later and I knew I was just going to go right in and sit down where I was going to sit. So I'm walking in and I go to the other side. That way it's like not by the line. And someone screams my name like super loud, like Carla. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? So it was this this guy that screams my name. And now everyone turns around and it's like, oh, hey, it's Carla. And I'm thinking, no, 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 please, please don't. That's not the type of attention I want. One, it's not my event. Two, I just want to sit down and I just want to enjoy what I went there for. And I would have had no problem and I had no problem for everyone that sent me a message and came up to me. was like, hi, how are you doing? My name is so-and-so. You know, I love your show or I follow you on social media. I would like a picture. I have no problem with that. It's the extra part when you forget that I'm a human being as well. That bothers me. It makes me a little like, ah, so again, the fear of people, that's not me. And I allowed, I allowed that fear 
what other people were going through and seeing their interaction with their fans affect me. So I'm going to start learning how to manage my anxiousness when I get to know that, you know, I'm about to be around a, a group of large people because I'm not an introvert. I really am not. I definitely think I am an am- ambivert. I need both. I need my time to recharge by myself and I need my time to be out there with people to like enjoy myself. So after I meet with my therapist tomorrow, I'll hopefully be a little clear on how to deal with this shift in my life. I'm also reading Becoming by Michelle Obama and through the story, you see the changes in her life from, you know, being from the South side of Chicago to then going to college to meeting Obama, how to deal with him and their marriage and all of that. Anyways, I'm not going to go into detail about that because we're actually going to be discussing this book at the end of the month during the Mixed Minds book club. So if you're not a part of it, you're going to miss out. <laughs> no, but really, if you do want to be a part of it, I'll link on here, Patreon, become a patron. You're going to get extra bonus episodes. I do my rants, but you can also be part of the book club. But if you don't want to be part of the book club, you just want to listen to this book by yourself or read it, go to audibletrial.com forward slash that I'm 30. You can get either the Michelle Obama book or any book you want that's available for free. Or I'll also link the $12 Amazon link. I got the book for 12 bucks. So I have the free audio version and I also have the Amazon book just because I wanted the physical book with me. And again, I'll link all that in the description of this episode. Now, before we move on to unsolicited advice, there is something I want to let you guys know. I have something for all you podcasters. So if you already have a podcast and you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know, I want to grow my podcast, I have a Grow Your Podcast boot camp. It is four weeks. It starts March 24th. So today is March 11th. Whenever you listen to this, March 24th, Grow Your Podcast boot camp. It is going to be great. I'm going to show you how to increase your downloads. I'm going to show you how to perfect your social media, make your social media, you know, engaging for people to want to come and follow you and like your pictures, how to secure your dream guests. I have had guests on my show that I never thought that they would say yes to. And because of the way I pitch to them and the way I, I position myself, yes, they do come onto my show. And you do not have to have a huge following. Ruthie, who just did un, um, Unexpected Reality, her episode is just got recorded. She only has, I think, four episodes out, and she reached out to the girls from Love is Blind. Love is Blind right now is literally the biggest Netflix show out there that everyone is talking about, and two of the girls agreed to come on to her show, and she literally just recorded with them, and she did not have a podcast before them. You just have to have the right pitch, and I will give you that pitch, and how to get on other people's platforms as well, because that's very important for marketing, and how to create those cool audiograms that I post all the time. Yep, you can get to learn how to do those for free. So if you're interested in that, I will also link that in the description of this episode. If you have any questions, email me at hello at carlawomeris.com. Anything that has to do with podcasting, or you can go to my website and you can also email me from there. Uh, so Grow Your Podcast Bootcamp starts March 24th. It is four weeks. If you cannot make it live, I will be recording the entire meeting and emailing it to you and you'll have it forever. So now let's get back to unsolicited advice. Okay, perfect. So with unsolicited advice this week, if you have any questions for me, if you want any advice for me, email me at shitim30podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you add uh, advice on the subject, please, 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 so I find your email. And this uh, letter is anonymous, so I'm going to call her Susie. So it says, hello, Carla. I'm sending this email from my phone, so excuse any spelling or grammar mistakes. I am tired. I feel you, girl. I feel you. When I make spelling mistakes, I'm like, I promise there's an excuse for it. (laughs) So it says, so I don't remember if it was this past episode or the one before that you talked about how you had a conversation with Ayana. So I have never thought about masturbation and never looked into it. I'm not sure where to start or who to ask. I know I can't ask my mom or my aunt about it and asking my friends just seems too personal. So I'm here to ask you what you told Diana. So I'm basically asking for the advice and information you gave her since I am clueless. I don't know if I want to do it, but I just want to know more about it. And if I decide to do it, what should I do? Like what is out there in regards to this? To this, I don't know if this is too personal, but it seems like a good question to ask an open and honest parent. Best wishes, Susie, which is what I called her. Also, side note, I really enjoy your podcast and you for being authentic. Last year was trash for me, but finding your podcast was a blessing. Thank you for being you. Well, I love you. Thank you for being comfortable, first of all, asking this question. Because what's funny about it is that I think I've talked on this platform how 
I it took me a while to even get there. So regardless of how old you are, whether you know you're young or older, I think masturbation is one of those things that in the black and brown community was looked down upon for women specifically and also within the church. So if you grew up in the church of any uh, in any sort, I know I think it's always just been this like taboo behind masturbation. So even for myself, I didn't I didn't learn how to do any of this until my 30s, really. I think I must have been 18 or 19 years old the first time that I tried a toy. So I think it was in the episode with Shanisha Boswell when she talked about masturbation at the end and what to do and how to do it. And I think it's very important that you get to know your body. So know your body from the beginning. Uh, We need to know what we like and that actually makes it even better for when you do have sex because I remember having sex for so many years and you guys will probably understand and, and know this part. You know, you're doing it and it's not that enjoyable. It's cool. But if you don't know what you like, no one else can please you. So I would say, you know, lay there just like Shanisha told me and it feels so fucking awkward, bro. I'm not even lying. When you just sit there and you're like, well, do I just feel a titty? Oh, here's my ass. It feels awkward, but you have to get out of your own head and just touch yourself. What feels good to you? Because some to some women, your nipples don't do anything. To other women, it drives them crazy. You know, the, uh, your inner thigh to some that might not feel anything, but then that feels amazing to you. So find out what it is that you like. And, and I would say, once you figure that out, go to like Walgreens or even Amazon and order maybe a small vibrator and start with that. And don't feel nasty. Don't feel discouraged. I think it's really important to know what it is that you do. And I also think that it's better for you to sit there and please yourself and have some time with yourself than going to get a whole bunch of multiple partners. I know that that is a controversial um, topic and something that I've always had an opinion about. I just, I don't agree with having multiple partners. I don't, I don't find it fulfilling for me. I feel like every time you have sex with someone, you're giving them, giving them a little part of you. You're letting them into your energy. You're transferring energies. It's just, it's so much when it comes to sex that if you're just doing it by yourself, you know, you don't have that transfer of energy and it's just you learning your body. So again, lay there. Maybe I, if you, I'm not sure if you're into porn or not, but maybe you can find some soft porn or you can maybe read an, an erotic book. So I would say, um, who are some good, Eric Jerome Dickey is a good one or, oh my God, her name starts, Zane read a Zane book and you know those there they talk about masturbation and they have different stories where you can vividly imagine these situations and from there uh start with it so you don't have to decide that you want to do this right now that you want to masturbate but if you're thinking about it you want to so just get it done um and start where you feel comfortable whether it's with your hands whether it's reading a book I think reading a book would be great but your body is so different from everyone else's. So don't Google what makes me feel good during masturbation or how you should do it because everybody's body is completely different. So learn your body, what your body wants. Read a book, get a toy, use your hands, and figure it out. I told you guys I've only been able to use my fingers uh, one time, and I was lit. I thought I had it, and I went for it again, and it didn't work. And I was like, fuck, what the hell? I don't want to always use these battery-operated shits. But I'm working on it. I'm definitely working on it because... Being far away from homeboy, uh, I got to. But I hope that helped for you and for anyone that's actually listening that has thought about, you know, getting better with masturbation and, you know, working on themselves. Like maybe you don't want to have sex with so many different people and you're like, well, let me just learn how to do it on my own. Now, moving on to my favorite shit talk. Okay, listen, I am so tired of y'all. I am so tired of this government and If I have to, like, shove my foot in my mouth later on, cool. But this coronavirus, I've talked about it on Instagram. I'm so tired. I am so tired. I get it. We have to wash our hands. I get it. You shouldn't pick your nose and put it in your eye. You shouldn't be licking uh, public places like rails. Like, these are all things that I believe we should have been taught all along. Do y'all not wash your hands? Do you guys not shower? I mean, I don't necessarily wash my hands after using the bathroom at home. And I talked about that too. So judge your mammy if you want to. But when it comes to this coronavirus, it's to me, it seems like it's nothing but a flu. To me, it seems like it's the government trying to distract us from something else. To me, it seems like it might be a, um, what is it called when they want more money into the, into the government or not the government, the economy. Maybe they want to lift the economy. So here we go. 
all hand sanitizers are sold, all the soap, all the toilet paper, all the canned foods, like all these things, all the the masks, like there are all these things being sold and oversold and it, the economy is going to jump from it. People are terrified. They're not going to vote. Hint, hint, it's happening during voting time and Super Tuesdays while we're trying to figure out who are going to be the primaries for the Democratic and the Republican parties. There are all these things going on and all of a sudden now this coronavirus is keeping us at home. The death tolls of the coronavirus compared to the influenza, which is the regular damn flu, are light years apart. People are dying every day, all the time, off of the regular flu. But now the corona has us hiding at home for thing. Come on. Come on. Usually people die from viruses like this are older people or young people or people with autoimmune diseases. And that you cannot help. Those people that have these issues know that if they get sick, this is going to happen to them. They take extra precautions. If you're a healthy individual, you don't have to go above and beyond and not go to work. Like, come on. It just seems like uh, this crazy health frenzy for no reason. When the bird flu was around, any of y'all catch the bird flu or the swine flu or any of other these crazy things that have happened before. But I think because of social media and we have a president that is so prevalent on social media and so fucking crazy i mean the guy is hilarious the guy has so much clout on social media that um and on the media that he can change an entire narrative so i i really i'm not taking it that serious i'm washing my hands you know i'm not trying to be around people coughing all day long but I wasn't trying to do that before anyway. You know, I'm taking my vitamins. I'm eating healthy. I drink my tea. All these things just like I did before. Uh, So if you are freaking out about it, I would tell you to just chill the fuck out. Do a little bit more research on it. Look at these numbers, what they really are. I really think it's just a scam from the government. It'll be all over once uh, the politics shit is done. That is just what America is. That is what the world does. We freak out about things that probably, it's not the plague. It's not the plague. And like we've seen other memes out there, I don't see anybody freaking out about HIV. And that is way more prevalent for us. There are a lot more HIV and AIDS cases than there are coronavirus. There is a lot more flu. There's a lot more of the cold. And you don't see any of us going crazy over it. So I'm just over everybody just coronavirus this, coronavirus that. I'm not going here. I'm not going there. All right, well, you stay your ass home. And I am a total advocate of it because these flights are cheap as hell. Have you guys seen these flights? No, 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 no. Have y'all seen these flights? I literally just got a $65 round trip flight to go see Bay next week. I had to cancel my flight that I was supposed to leave yesterday for. We're not going to talk about that because that was for some reasons that I won't be talking about yet. That him and I are super bummed that I had to cancel that flight, but it was $115. This next one for next week, $65. And I'm like, I can come see you like every day, every day. So Corona, keep on. Corona, keep it coming because I want to see Bay as often as I can. And he goes on eight to nine flights a week and nothing is wrong with him. He's wearing some fake old mask and he is perfectly fine. You know how often people travel all the time and nothing is wrong with them? I don't believe it. I'm not biting into it. Hopefully it doesn't bite me in the ass, but I am not worried about it. I'm just going to keep drinking my vitamin C and I'm going to hop on my flights and call it a mother fucking day. So I know this episode is shorter than usually than the usual episodes, but I definitely did want to stop by and not miss a week of content for you all. I hope this helped you in some type of way. If it did, please do not, please, please, please leave me a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. And actually, while we're speaking on that, I do want to read to you guys um, a review from Apple Podcasts just because it does help so much. And I told you guys I love to read them. So this week I want to highlight this specific one. Also, share the podcast with your friends. Share it on social media. Tag me so I can see what your favorite part is. I'm on Twitter at Carla Womeris. Tweet me what you thought about this episode. You know, what, you know, resonated with it. And you're like, girl, listen, I have that anxiety too. Or no, you enjoy your anxiety that makes you say, hey, it's time to get my shit going. Or if you had any falling outs with some friends, then how did you deal with it? So I want to highlight today, um, Miss Game 404. I think 404 is Atlanta. So I'm thinking you're from Atlanta, girl. Hey, girl. (laughs) It says, Carla, you're so dope. As a fellow podcaster, I honestly stray away from podcasts in the same category as mine. Really, just because I want to hear different content. However, I thoroughly enjoy listening to Carla and guests. Oh, sorry. There's no guests today. I hope you enjoyed me. (laughs) I have found that I have a lot in common with Carla and her mindset. Swear, if I move to Orlando, Carla, you're going to be my BFF there. 
This podcast is not only entertaining, but also has those moments that make you think on a deeper level. I also think that Carla's growth in podcasting is amazing. Leaving corporate to work on something that is way more fulfilling, that is goals. Keep up the great work, sis, and y'all make sure that you follow her on all her socials. Honestly, babe, thank you so much. Uh, I do know what it feels like to be a fellow podcaster and trying to get different content into your ears and maybe not listening to other ones, but we're all different. We all have different experiences and we all have different opinions. So you go ahead and keep listening and send me a, maybe I know who you are. I'm not sure. Send me a message on social media so I know who you are. Uh, Leaving my corporate job is something really big and I actually have an announcement that I might be making this week. Oh, I cannot wait to tell you guys because although today started a little bummy in the past two weeks, today I got really, really, really good news and I think it's coming into fruition. So fingers crossed it'll come through. Uh, again, thank you so much for leaving that review. If you haven't yet left me a review on Apple Podcasts, please make sure you do so. All you have to do is like scroll over, leave a rating and say write a review and write whatever it is that your pretty little heart desires. And don't forget to share an episode or two. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Goodbye.